All right, everyone hear me all right? Cool. Um, my name is Corinne Alexandra, and I run a one-woman boutique here in uh, San Diego. So basically, that's a pretty fancy way of saying that I work from home in my yoga pants all day and occasionally put on makeup for Skype meetings. There's a lot of guys here, so I think some of the girls might get what I mean. <laughs> and then... So yeah, I run, my design studio is called Stuck With Pins, and I provide photography and design solutions for um, creative small businesses, which um, is usually like other fellow makers and doers. And so a lot of that is like small companies, like um, lifestyle coaches or startup brands and other artists. And I work with a lot of bands and musicians as well. So I work with them to um, do their branding development and it's usually starting from the ground up and then we provide like a bunch of other design or photography services for them along the way. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you guys through my process because I usually learn a lot from seeing other people sort of start to finish processes with their design stuff. So in the beginning stages, I spend a lot of time digging to establish like the brand mission of my clients. So so much, like everyone thinks that like being a freelance designer is you're sitting making cool stuff all day, but most of it is like questionnaires and meetings and going through all of this. So I start with um, branding questionnaires and just like Google Docs and I have my clients fill this stuff out like really in detail. And then we get together over a Skype meeting or FaceTime and then we chat about their answers because I really like to hear more about what they're actually excited about when they're telling me about their business because they can write something down but then once they're actually telling me about it they might say something else that they didn't even include on this and so I take that into consideration moving on to the next steps. So once we're totally on the same page with all of the ideas then I go into extensive mood boarding. Pinterest is like my best friend <laughs> for things like this. So I do a lot of mood boarding and then send those to my clients and we go over those again too. So there, this is a project called The Bark Artist that I just finished up. And for them, I actually did two mood boards. We did one of a direction we wanted to go and one for a direction we wanted to avoid because they are a, um, they're a bar cart company and they sell a bunch of um, pieces for your bar cart, not the alcohol, but the other pieces. And so there were two ways we could have gone with this. We could go a little bit more classy art deco style or we could go dark and prohibition style. And so we went with the more the classy um, look and wanted to avoid the bit more masculine, dark prohibition style. So that was good to have a visual for them to show them um, before we got started. Then um, I do a lot of sketching. Um, this is probably not the best project to show for sketches because I knew exactly what I wanted right from the get-go. But even, even still, I sketched out ton of, tons of other ideas um, just to make sure that the idea that I had in mind was the best solution. So how many of you guys actually like to love the sketching process? <laughs> That's good. Actually, a lot of people hate it. And it's like the rest of you, if you don't like it, get familiar with it because it's like <laughs> the most foundational aspect of the project. Like I, I realized that a lot of my projects that I didn't really, like I skimped on the sketchings, I can see it later in the final design. I'm like, man, I could have done this, but um, I didn't explore that in the beginning stages. So um, after I've done all the sketching, I pick some of the best ones that I like, and I don't show my clients any of the sketching. I just pick from here, like based on my expertise, because once you start showing clients sketches, they start thinking they're an artist too, so <laughs> I avoid that whole situation. Um, so yeah, I pick the best ones, and then I, I, I develop those further, and then I show those to the client. So. Um, I really value communication collaboration with my clients. Like I like to involve them in on that step of the process of showing them kind of the, the direction we're going and what do they think so far. Um, again, I don't like to give them too much of the wheel because clients do have a way of taking over sometimes with that. But I do like to hear you know, what they like and don't like because from there, even if I think I know best, they might actually have an idea that'll make it better. So, for this project, we ended up expanding the first option, like I thought, but we added a couple extra things to it. And um, so once we have a good one, then I do a full brand guide, and that includes like secondary logos and colors and fonts and patterns, and then like the general imagery for the brand. And then depending on the project, we make more awesome stuff that we can launch with the brand. So that's like business cards and um, promotional flyer type stuff and whatever else the project demands. And um, so I also do uh, web design 
And I'm not a developer like a lot of you guys, <laughs> but I can customize a mean uh, WordPress site. So that's what we did for this project and then good old MailChimp. So that's what I've been pretty much keeping busy with for the last couple of years as a designer. Um, I still feel very new to this whole solopreneurial world, even though I've actually been freelancing professionally for almost 10 years now. Um, so when Drew reached out to me to speak, I actually thought it was a spam email. <laughs> and I don't mean that like in a self-deprecating way, like, oh, I'm not worthy to speak here or anything, but it's just that so often I still personally feel like a beginner that's like learning from everyone else. It's actually weird to realize that some people want to learn from me. So that's actually what I'm going to be talking about today is being a beginner. But first, I wanted to give a little bit of background on me. So <laughs> this is my early work. <laughs> Um, I have been an artist my entire life, like literally when I was a child I picked up a pencil and was drawing. Like I was that kid at birthday parties where everyone's drawing with crayons and I would draw like a cat and it legitimately looked like a cat. So that was me, I've been creating ever since. Um, and then I got my <laughs> first AOL account when I was like 12 years old or something and all hell broke loose. I, the internet just exposed me to so many other ways that I could be creative, um, so not just through drawing. I got really into this thing called pixel dolling. I don't know if any of you guys remember that at all. <laughs> it was a very like weird girly thing to do online where you took, um, it's like you literally drew things with pixels. So there is a whole community that would make these things called bases and they were like basically naked little figures and you with hair, without hair and you would just draw on top of them in Photoshop or some people just did it in, actually, they did it in paint sometimes too. So I begged my dad to get me Photoshop elements and <laughs> that's what I started making these things in. Then I wanted to have a website to display these things on and so I actually created my, I bought a book called Learn HTML in a Weekend and I actually learned it in a weekend and I made my own website. This is like the first website I ever made. I was super emo back then, obviously. So, and I had a weird obsession with like girls with eye patches and shaved heads, I don't know. So, and then I made, from that point on, I got really into just like customizing any sort of webby type thing. So making websites and customizing like my live journal and Zanga layouts. So that's what the stuff is on the right. It's like my weird things. And I was probably like totally ripping off like other artists without any fair use. But <laughs> anyways, so then that led into the MySpace era and I, so I started my own business when I was 16 years old, making MySpace layouts and shooting promo photos for bands. And uh, yeah, I designed probably about, uh, about 200 MySpace pages for like bands and a bunch of scene kids uh, back when, back in the day when that was cool. And then um, Facebook eventually killed off MySpace, sadly. So I kind of got out of business at that time, but um, I, have to just explain that I was a major MySpace whore. So this was me, circa MySpace days, <laughs> time of <laughs> band tees and bad hair. And I had 62,000 friends at the time. And that's like, I say that's like the equivalent of these Instagrammers with 300K followers nowadays. So it was a big deal for me. <laughs> um, but that's how I really got my start. So that's why I show you guys this. Um, to this day, I actually still have new clients come to me sometimes and say, I've been following you since the MySpace days. Um, so I think that's hilarious. I also think it's hilarious that we use MySpace days as like a timestamp for an era. But um, <laughs> so I guess if I can offer one bit of advice for success, it's go back in time and become MySpace famous. Uh, but really, the point is I was hustling at an early age. I was constantly discovering new outlets for my creativity, constantly learning, growing, and then sharing my work online, and then learning and growing from more learning and growing more from there. So um, after a lifetime immersed in art, I've positioned myself as a creative of many talents. So I do wedding photography, music photography, creative portraits, fine art photography, lifestyle photography. I create logos, print collateral, stationary design, menu design, album art, apparel design, web design and development, Squarespace customization, WordPress customization, packaging design, illustration, lettering, book and page layout, and more. And in my free time, I've dabbled in writing, stick and poke tattooing, taxidermy, interior design and styling, zombie effects, makeup and cosplay. <laughs> Obviously, I don't do any of those last things as a professional thing, but it was just another way for me to kind of exercise my creativity. But yeah, apparently I don't know how to edit myself down. Um, but rather than just tell you guys what I do, um, here is a quick video of some of my work.
So I guess, how did I amass all of these creative talents? And that's by being a professional beginner. So that is the title of my talk today, Be a Professional Beginner. So the first point of that is stop comparing and keep creating. So I love, absolutely love this quote by Picasso. And he says, every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. So most of us here, I assume, manage to remain artists in some capacity, but I think a lot of us have lost this childlike artist's heart that drives this idea behind being a beginner. And most of us, it's like discouragement to start something new usually stems from comparison, right? Um, this I'll never be as good as that person or someone else already has this idea that's better than mine. Um, but I had this realization that it's like children don't look at their scribbled drawings and criticize how it could be better, right? They're, they just love drawing and they're not comparing their scribbles to the child next to them. It's only later on that we start looking at what everyone else is doing and suddenly our scribbles don't look as good to us. And suddenly we don't even want to draw anymore. So comparison not only stifles your creativity, but it robs you of the joy of creating at all. So just stop comparing and keep creating. Next point, make shit nobody cares about. So as a beginner, the things you make aren't always going to be good and people aren't always going to like it or even care about it. Like we all know that but we all need to be okay with that and continue to work in that state. Um, so another quote I love, a very wise cartoon dog once Dude, said, Dude, sucking at something is the first step towards being sort of good at something. So yeah, I get probably all my life lessons from Adventure Time. Um, yeah, I love that quote because it's like, I made so much bad work before I really started making semi-decent work. And I think most of us, unless you're just like a child prodigy that is good like right off the bat, um, we all like made really bad work to begin with. Um, and I think sometimes we need to get back to that point of being okay with making shitty work. <laughs> um, and I was super inspired by um, just everyone's doing so many awesome things here. And it's like, instead of being that person who's going, oh, I wish I could do that, or I'd love to do that. It's like, go, yeah, I want to do that and actually put in the work to do it and realize you're gonna be bad at it at first, but be okay with that. Be excited about wanting to learn something new and know that you're not going to be bad at it forever. So anyways, I, um, yeah, once I started making actually decent work, then, you know, sometimes still people, still no one actually cared about my work. And that was another hurdle to kind of get over. Um, so yeah, it's like, you know, when you post um, something on Dribbble or <laughs> Instagram and you're super excited about it and you think you're going to get all this like attention for it because you think it's awesome, but then you get absolutely nothing on it or even worse on Instagram, someone just posts a thumbs up emoji and I hate that. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, to be a successful professional, professional beginner, you need to not give a shit about any of that. Just keep creating, keep coming up with ideas and keep honing your craft. Um, so make things because you like them. When you keep your head down and keep creating work that makes you happy, you're only gonna get better or at least suck a little less and eventually people start to notice. Um, but if you start something brand new and expect it to be great or get all of this praise for it and it doesn't land, what usually happens? It's usually when you give up at that point sometimes. Um, again, like I said, it's like I was super inspired by Allison's message yesterday of like the uh, doing all this crazy 3D stuff. And, and I hope a lot of you are like, if you've ever had an inkling that want to get into 3D, that now you're like, let's, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go home and get on some of these sites and start learning how to do that. But that you'll push past the the shitty stage and the nobody cares about what I'm doing stage. So next slide is don't stop learning. So one of the big things that sets my work apart is I do so many things. Obviously you guys saw, um, but one example is I do both design and then some basic development for websites. Um, so I like I said I taught myself to code when I was 12, and I quickly learned what a valuable skill set it was to have. And uh, when I was in design school, I tried to tell my peers how important it was to learn to at least have an understanding of code and development because it pairs so well when you're designing websites that you should at least know what your developer is going to need to do at that point. So, but so many of them gave up on it because they weren't immediately good at it. And uh, they just say, oh, well, I'll just focus on my one thing that I am really good at. And I guess... There's nothing wrong with being a niche designer, and there's a lot of people who actually recommend that you focus, uh, narrow your focus on one thing, which I obviously don't do. <laughs> but the way I see it is we live in this age of 
endless opportunities with so much information at our fingertips, why limit yourself to just learning one thing? So if you want to be a creative of many talents, be a professional at learning new things. So don't give up because you don't immediately get it. Be excited about learning a new skill set. Um, I'm definitely a junkie for exploring new things. Um, that's definitely how I got into photography and packaging and all sorts of different types of design. It's like I was just, I saw it in the wild and I was like, I can do that and I set out on learning it. So um, just, there's so many ways that you can learn new things now too. It's like you can go back to school, read books, take e-courses, or just sit down and figure it out yourself, which is my favorite method. <laughs> But it's just so easy to find new ways to learn. You just have to have the passion to keep at it. So once you do that, then you fake it till you make it. Obviously, I wasn't immediately an expert at any of the things that I showed you guys, but um, I would actually offer them as services as if I was good at them. So I just I genuinely faked it. And then I would get good at it on the job as I figured it out along the way. So my <laughs> next point, sub point on this is pretend to be good at the thing, then get good at the thing. So obviously I don't recommend that for everything. Like if you have no clue about code, then don't learn, <laughs> don't expect to learn it in two weeks and think you're gonna offer like a fully custom WordPress site to a client or something. That's just kind of a bad idea. But there were little things that I started dabbling in and I would offer them to clients and I'd get good at them and no one knew I was ever not good at them. So another way to fake it till you make it is by creating personal projects. So if there's something that you really want to be good at and nobody's or something that you really want to be doing but nobody's hired you to do it yet, then create a personal project. And I think a lot of you guys know that and I've been talking with a couple people here about that concept but um, it it is seriously like one of the best ways to get work. Like if, you're, if you want to be doing packaging design or you want to be doing um, app development, whatever it is, then make a personal project. Otherwise, people are not gonna know that you can do that. So make fake projects and then get hired for real projects. Um, my whole portfolio for the longest time was just like personal projects with a few client pieces scattered in between. Um, it was mostly stuff that I'd worked on in school or projects that I had fleshed out beyond whatever the school project um, included. And that got me a lot of work doing those things. Um, I, it even like attracted the clients that I wanted to be working with. So um, if I did something in a certain style, then I ended up getting clients that, that appreciated that certain style too. So if you're just like, if you wanna be working with these cool stylish companies, but your portfolio is just full of like very sterile corporate type stuff that you did for a Craigslist job, then that's not gonna attract the clients you want. So some of my most like Pinterest viral projects were personal ones. Um, and I got a lot of inquiries based on those. So make fake projects until you get hired for real ones. And my last sub point under this is fake it till you make it, is fake it with confidence. Um, so as I was prepping for my talk, i.e. putting it together last minute, <laughs> I watched a bunch of the conference videos from the previous years, and I just wanted to shake some of the speakers. It's like their work and what they had to say was so good, but they kept down talking themselves. And I know the nerves kind of get, get going and that's what happens, but it's like so many of them were like, oh, I don't know why Drew asked me to talk, or I'm not that accomplished or experienced. And it's like you're as accomplished as you let people believe you are. So you need to fake it and own it. <laughs> and if you're going out into the world and you're just like, oh, here's my work, it's not that good, then yeah, people are gonna think it's not that good. So um, yeah, I wanted to be cool and put a GIF in my presentation like everyone else, so. <laughs> Left shark is like the epitome of this idea of fake it till you make it. So people freaking loved Left shark after this came out. It's like he had no idea what he was doing, but he owned it. And the internet went crazy over it. It's like there was like Halloween costumes and all sorts of merch of just one backup dancer for Katy Perry. So I don't know. You can, <laughs> the whole point in that is you can be a beginner, but be a professional beginner. Uh, be confident in your beginnerness and fake it till you make it. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you.